Hi, I'm Joe from Logitech, and welcome back to You've Got Options. Today I'm very excited because we have a special guest, Holly Bracken, Global Software Product Manager. And today we're going to talk about the Actions ecosystem. Let's dive right in. Can you give our viewers just an idea of what we mean when we say the Actions ecosystem? Sure. Um, so if we take the view of, you know, um, a user buying a, a Logitech product, I think that's probably the best lens to take. So as a user, you know, you go into a shop, you pick up a, a Logitech mouse. Um, and for many people, they don't know that actually right from when you open the box, you have support of our software, which is our Options Plus application. And when you buy a mouse and you install our Options Plus software, you get the whole Actions ecosystem with it. So it's not just a hardware device, it's actually, um, it's extending the mouse capabilities. So you don't just have, you know, a point scroll mouse, you now have, you know, the ability to open applications from your mouse. You have the ability to create smart actions, which is a sequence of applications from your mouse. You have the ability to actually customize your mouse. So if you feel like you want to increase your point scroll, you can do that. So we provide so many different ways that users can use our actions um, to customize their workflows and make them more productive. I love that. And you touched on smart actions, which is one of my personal favorite features. And for the users that use it, it's one of the most uh, repeatedly used features uh, that we offer. Can you tell us a little bit more about like smart actions, how it is now? And I know there's going to be some, some evolution to it as well. Yeah, so for smart actions, you know, that's definitely, I think, one of the, the, the biggest hidden capabilities of Options Plus. For the users who use smart actions, once they adopt it, they, they never go back from it, right? So they love it. Um, and what we try to do is we try to help users who don't understand what a smart action is, um, getting them to create them, getting them to set up their triggers and helping them to understand how to do that. Imagine, you know, opening 10 apps every morning. You probably do this every day. You can now do that with a smart action. If you want to get to your work calendar and your work email in one click, you can do that instead yeah. of, you know, trying to go through tabs and so on. So, you know, it really brings the power um, behind your mouse, the smart action does. And as part of how smart actions evolve, we're going to try to bring smart actions into the actions ecosystem better. Um, and one thing we haven't discussed actually is their plugins in the marketplace mm -hmm. and how that's going to affect smart actions because right now we really, you know, there's so much opportunity with what we have, but we actually just need to get better at bringing them closer together. Oh, so we might be able to assign smart actions directly to the actions ring then? Yeah, like right now today, to do that, you have to install a plugin from our marketplace. Um, in future, you know, we would hope to remove those barriers to adoption for users. Similar to how um, you can create a smart action when you're in our device pages today, it would be really great if you could do that within the Actions Ring. Absolutely, because Actions Ring is by far my favorite feature that we've rolled out. I use it every day. And since we're talking Actions Ring, can you give, uh, can you give the viewers a little overview of what the Actions Ring is and, and where we might see the Actions Ring going? Sure, so our Actions Ring is our radial virtual menu. Um, and you can basically pair that with any MX device that you have today. Um, and as you mentioned with the MX Master 4, that was such um, a successful launch. But what's really special about that is that it's paired with the Actions Ring. Um, so, you know, it's a really exciting time for the Actions ecosystem. And as you said, it's really important for us to try and bring everything into the Actions ecosystem. And what I like to think about is, you know, the Actions Ring should really be your your gateway into the actions ecosystem. So anything that you put on your actions ring, it should be your most used tasks that you know you don't want to be finding around your desktop or through your tabs. It should be right there. Um, and what's really, really impressive about the actions ring is it's contextual. So that means basically if you're using an application that we have a plugin for. So for example, if you go to a marketplace and you install Photoshop, um, if you have our Photoshop plugin with the actions ring, the minute you open Photoshop, it actually changes. So you now have your Photoshop actions right within your actions ring. So if you're you know, a creator and you're in there constantly using the same actions within Photoshop and it's annoying for you to try to find them all the time, 
that's where the actions ring really high. That's power. what I love so much about it because sometimes when I assign shortcuts places and I forget where they are and it takes some yeah. time to build that muscle memory, but with the actions ring, I've got all of those bubbles right there giving me that visual indicator. No matter what I'm, app I'm using, I see all the tools that I use most frequently. So that's why I think it's such a useful feature for people. Yeah, a hundred percent. And you know, if you're a type of person who, um, you know, kind of has many tabs open and you have lots of apps open all the time, like me, for me, the actions ring is a shortcut tool, right? So like I have, for example, my calendar set up, my email set up and my AI tool set up. I have everything that I want to go to, um, but I struggle to find. Um, and then I also have, you know, some of my smart actions on there. Um, and within the actions ring, we actually even have um, a feature called folders, which allows nested actions. So really what we're doing is, you know, we're after expanding the functionality that you have on your mouse and keyboard today. If you're someone who, you know, has all of your FRO taken up, the actions ring is for you because now you have an extra eight bubbles plus your folders. So it's really exciting. You can get up to 72 different options yeah. if you really want to get crazy with it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And then one of the other things that I really love about the Actions Ring is the ability to bring in actions from plugins, because that's also new for us, having the marketplace and having the, uh, the actions from all those plugins able to be brought in. Can you talk about some of the uh, recent additions to the marketplace and, and how, you, uh, how you see those plugins uh, working into the Actions ecosystem? Yeah, sure. So one that we actually recently developed here in Cork uh, with partnership with Perplexity AI was our Perplexity plugin. Um, and that was really exciting because we wanted to bring um, our users along, right? They're often asking us for enhanced capabilities through AI. And that was something that when we chose Perplexity as a partner was something that, you know, we were really passionate about. We really wanted users to have such a close integration with an AI tool. Um, and now that is a really successful plugin. It's something that I use every day. Um, and with that, you know, you get the ability to put your most used actions from your Perplexity app right there on your actions ring. And you can do that through many profiles. Um, but what really excites me actually about the marketplace um, is, you know, the developer community. And in future, you know, that's really going to change the landscape of the actions ring. So what we have today is great. But as we evolve that and as we start to look outwards, um, and even now, you know, with our Actions Ring users, we get such good feedback. So, for example, we launched the Actions Ring and we already have so many feature requests. And our users are really, really good at making our software work for them. So when it comes to plugins, um, can you imagine if a developer wants a plugin on their Actions Ring, how will that change the game for the Actions Ring? And how many more people would find that useful? So I think that's what's exciting about the actions ring and about the, you know, the developer ecosystem there is the ability to build plugins, the ability to put them on your actions ring, the ability for them to integrate with smart actions. I mean, if you have all that together, you have a mouse that you buy today in two years time, you get all of that functionality. What I say all the time, buy it today, it will get better over time. It's not something where you buy a Logitech device and you use it until it breaks. You have kind of a constant evolution of the hardware through software. Yeah, a hundred percent. Well, Holly, this is exactly why we wanted to have you on. It's so interesting to hear about smart actions, actions ring, the plugins, and how it's really an actions ecosystem with everything starting to be tied together. I know it's a, a work in progress. I know that um, it's, it's come a long way, but there's so much more coming in the future. So we might have to have you back on uh, for some updates later, but thank you so much for your time today. And uh, thanks for joining us on You've Got Options. Thanks for having me. It was so great to chat with Holly today and learn more about the Actions ecosystem and what's coming on the roadmap. We've got a lot more news to come, so stay tuned, and we'll see you next time on You've Got Options.